Vietnamese sometimes claim this is one of the most ethnic diversely diverse countries in Southeast Asia. 54 recognized ethnic minorities. Somebody once described uh, color-coded ethnicity maps for Vietnam as being absolutely psychedelic, colors within colors. Most of us um, think about Vietnam as a venue for conflict between humans in particular, but in fact it's world-renowned for its high rates of diversity and also the large number of species that are found in Vietnam and nowhere else in the world. For instance, a fifth of the world's primates that are highly endangered are found in Vietnam and nowhere else. There are lots and lots of reasons why Vietnam has high rates of biological diversity, and some of those relate to the geography of the country. It's long and skinny, and it crosses many different kinds of habitats and climates. One factor that supports biological diversity as well as cultural diversity is actually isolation. So when different populations of a particular species become separated and don't interact with each other, there's no interbreeding between the two populations over a long period of time. And that's one of the factors that's led to speciation across Vietnam and the large numbers of species that we find there. If one were to account for the huge ethnic diversity in Vietnam, I suppose the first factor would be the mountainous terrain, the fact that people are living in relative isolation. The mountains are places where people are not engaging in the same pressure to conform linguistically, culturally, ecologically. They hold on to life practices that are somewhat different from those of the majority down in the deltas. The fact that Vietnam fought 30 years of war, of which the uh, American experience was only the last interlude, meant that attempts to open up highland areas were postponed. Connections with broader markets were postponed. What you do see now, as markets have opened, as the privatization of the economy, increasing connections and less isolation. After the war, people started to spend more time going into the field and doing work to understand the biodiversity of Vietnam. That would be both Vietnamese scientists as well as scientists from other parts of the world. And as they did so, they started to realize that there's a lot of Vietnam that we don't know about. In Vietnam, with this high human population, you have a lot of heavy impact on the environment. You have many, many different kinds of threats. There are threats from uh, land conversion. There are threats from pollution, from factories, from sewage, from lots of different types of pollutants being dumped into wetland systems. There is a lot of concern about traditional handicrafts. There are some villages that have made a very successful transition because they're, they're producing things that people need. They're producing, for example, temple statues for a huge revival in popular religion. Certain other handicrafts are disappearing because there is less use for them, or because people don't want to pay for the cost of a skilled work of hand production. When you can buy the stuff that is machine made, there has been a turn, an awareness on some parts, to rethink how does indigenous knowledge protect the landscape. We've learned so much from people who've lived, for instance, in the mountain regions and stewarded biodiversity for a long time. How does the things that the grandfathers knew about plants and animals, interpreted through what we might consider a religious tissue, how helpful is that? And there has been a revaluing of local knowledge in Vietnam as in many other places. We've had an opportunity to learn how they live within their environment, what they know about the species that are found there and the interactions in those species. And often areas of the world that have high biological diversity also have high cultural diversity. And so we work very hard to think about how can we continue to support those levels of diversity.